Hello and welcome, dear viewer, to another tutorial video. Today I will be discussing something slightly related to my last major video, the Pokemon Damage Formula Explanation. There should be a card on screen right now. In that video I presented a lot of formulas. As many of you may know, these are LaTeX formulas. So if you don't know what LaTeX is or how to use it, this video isn't exactly for you, but to give a short introduction, LaTeX is a typesetting system so you write a normal text file with special commands in it, a bit like programming, and you run LaTeX which will generate beautiful finished documents. It can do all of the things that your typical Word or LibreOffice does, it's just much more versatile for specific applications like scientific writing. But in turn of course it's also more complicated. What I want to show you today is how you can create transparent images from LaTeX as I did for the formulas in the Pokemon video. And I will also show you some tricks specifically related to video editing if you plan to use the formulas in videos as I did. So I'm assuming that you have any LaTeX distribution installed and I myself use Tech Live, and I will be demonstrating all of this inside of Visual Studio Code and I'm using the LaTeX extension for that. Uh, all of this will work with any text editor and just any old command line. Also, this method should work on all normal operating systems. I'm just using Windows because I use Windows. First, you want to prepare your LaTeX document in a specific way. I'm using this template, which will be freely available in the video description. I'm going to go through its components quickly. So the document class is normal article. And the packages are essentially everything that you would need for most types of documents. Um, there is ASCII input, there is coloring, a geometry is very important, this is absolutely required. Uh, the AMS packages, the graphics packages, some table stuff that I specifically needed for my complicated Pokemon tables, and uh, multi-language support if you're not using English or you need some other English specific stuff, and um, bold math and language sensitive quotation marks. This is very important, the geometry. I'm using uh, A3 size, a very large paper size, um, which is required if you have very large tables and uh, many of my Pokemon video tables were just barely large enough to fit on this. So uh, that's why we are using the large size. Then I use only very small edges, half a centimeter, just to have some, some room. And the reason why the right edge is so large, 5.5 centimeters, is so that I can wrap the text in whatever specific way I want and I needed that for my Pokemon videos. All of this you can change. I would recommend you leave the paper size, but you can change all of this um, however you need the edges. But in general, the edges won't make a difference. So most of the time you won't need to change this. And the spacings, you can change them however you want. I needed a bit of a larger spacing inside of arrays and tables and I removed some of the paragraph spacings and adjusted some of the other ones. Now this is the most important part of this entire special LaTeX setup. It is the this page style empty command and this will remove headers, footers and title pages and it will prevent uh, the later commands that we will execute later to do something weird. So this line is very important, do not remove it. And yeah, that's basically all of the prelude you can put in any sort of content here. I have three examples from my Pokemon Attack Mechanics video. If you want to do math, then I would strongly recommend you use the display math command, which will put some nice large math and also the fractions will look very good. And this is just the main damage formula. And I will use that as a demonstration here. And now you can run normal LaTeX and most systems will do that automatically or there is some sort of command. Again, I'm not going to do, go over the details. I can just save and down here you will see a build command message. And if I now click on the preview um, icon, we will see that there is a beautiful PDF with um, the exact LaTeX that I wanted and there is nothing else on this page. And it's a very large page as you can see that's A3 paper. And again, this is the normal PDF that my system outputted. And you can see on the left side in this folder, we have got all of the auxiliary files and the PDF file itself. So actually, 
For the future parts, we don't need the PDF. You now want to make sure that a DVI file is created from your LaTeX. DVI is a special file format that was designed for LaTeX and is sort of a precursor to PDF. Many LaTeX systems today don't automatically create DVI files because usually you don't need them, but we today actually need them. This again may depend on what specific system you're using and I'm not going to go over the details, but in my case, in the LaTeX extension for Visual Studio Code, I need to go into the LaTeX tab, um, LaTeX commands, build LaTeX project, and then LaTeX MKRC recipe. And this will actually build a PDF, but by using DVI as an in-between and creating a PDF from a DVI. And this is some, some systems do that, uh, some don't. Uh, it very much depends. If we go back to the files that we have, we can now see that there is a DVI file here and you, you can't really open that. It's a binary file format just as PDF is. If you have that, then you should pretty much be good. So now we go over to the command line. Now the magic happens. Uh, up until now, we've just done normal LaTeX stuff. First of all, we're going to use a built-in LaTeX program called DVI SVGM, which will transform DVI files into SVG files. SVG is a common vector file format that browsers can view and that can also be read and manipulated by programs like Inkscape and Adobe Illustrator. And if you only need an SVG file, you can stop after this step and not do the conversion to PNG from SVG. But if you need PNG, we are actually going to use a handy tool called SVG export. It is a node package, node.js package that actually uses a browser in the background to create PNG images from SVG. Installing that is a bit more complicated. First, you want to have node.js installed and I will link to their website for instructions on installing it. It's not that difficult. Then you want to install SVG export via the node package manager npm, which should come with node itself. And if you don't have npm, again, you can look on the npm website or on the node website. I will link all of these in the description. Uh, there are great instructions there. And that command for installing it is just very short and it will uh, install SVG export globally. I will now run it. This will just take a minute um, and it should already be installed or we get a reinstall. I think we get a reinstall. The reason why I install SVG export globally is that I don't want to have it in this folder itself and I don't want to have a node modules folder and all of the computer science people will know that's <laughs> a very terrible uh, thing to have in in a folder that doesn't actually use Node.js or the NPM system itself. Anyways, you should now have SVG export. Now we can just complete the command chain. And I have everything on one line. You already saw that. This is two commands separated by a semicolon. And I first create an SVG file without font rendering and with a very large scale and with high precision and with only the first page. And um, you can probably leave out this, but then the file names may change. So just put this command in. And of course, then afterwards, uh, there's the name of our DVI file. We can see it here in the folder. It should have the same name as our tech file. You can change the scale, which will change final resolution of the PNG image. And this value of 10 worked very good for my 4K video, but you will probably not need as much, so just play around with it. Then after the SVG creation, I call SVG export again on the same line. Its arguments are very simple. It just takes an input SVG file and the name of the output PNG file. So let's run this. And this will just take a second. It might take longer on your computer. My computer is pretty fast, but you sh should see something like this. This is the output DVI SVGM. And then we should see some output like this. And this is the output from SVG export. And again, if you just need uh, the output of the, the SVG converter, then you can just run this part. Or if you just want to convert some SVGs to PNGs, you can just run this part. But it was very helpful for me in the video creation process. I just use this command over and over just on one line. It's very handy. So now you might have already noticed here's our PNG file. I can actually preview that in Visual Studio Code and it's 
bit hard to see because it's transparent, but there is our formula and this image is very high resolution. It's probably several thousand pixels in height and width. But as I already said, you can change uh, the scale here in converting DVI to SVG and that will change the actual final resolution. You cannot change the scale in SVG export. That is very important. Now, of course, the main advantage of this approach over just screenshotting it, which I actually started to do and then switched to this me method, which I sort of invented myself. The main advantage is that you will have perfect transparency. You don't have to do chroma keying or removing the white background or whatever. And so if you just wanted to know how to do this conversion, then you're already done. You can end the video now. That's all you need to know. But I just want to show you some short things in relation to video editing if you plan to use the images like I did in videos. So I'm here in DaVinci Resolve, which is my NLE of choice. And I've just created a new project with some example media. And if we go into the project settings, you can see that the program is 4K with 30 FPS down here. Um, we could probably change this to 30 as well. And these tips will of course apply to most resolutions and frame rates disregarding that. First of all, many programs will probably not show the preview for your images correctly because they use black backgrounds, but otherwise no worries, everything is fine. First of all, I'm going to drag in a background image. Very nice, just that we have a light background to work off. Then I'm going to drag that image into the foreground. And as you can see now, in this case, we're lucky, but this is still too large. And you will see if you have extremely large things like tables, for example, they can be multiple times the size of your viewport. So what you want to do, of course, is resize them. And this is the reason why I chose such a large resolution. It allows me to resize the stuff. And probably in the original video, I usually used a scale something like this. You can see it's um, pretty good. In this case, we could also increase the scale just a bit. The thing that I'm doing here is, of course, just transforming the thing. You can do this in any editor, I'm 100% sure. So now maybe we want to reposition our image and it just works like a normal image. So also uh, it should play back fine. We can see 30 FPS, no problem. I don't have the most powerful graphics card, but it handles this just fine. The last thing I want to talk about in this context is transitions. I used a lot of transitions. I just wanted to quickly also show you how I did the transitions in the actual video. And there were sort of smooth transitions. And if you're having smooth transitions, you're always talking about Bezier curves. I'm going to go to video transitions. And the actual transition that I used was push. And if we put down push, we can see it's just a sliding motion in, or if we use push on the end of our track, let's just zoom out just a bit. Um, if we use push and at the end of our uh, image, we can see that it's um, pushing the thing out, of course. No, but this is a linear push. You can see it moves linearly and it um, stops instantly, and that's not very satisfying. So what I did is here into the transition settings. I again, I don't know how this works in other software, but you can probably on most software edit the properties of such a video transition. And uh, the transition that I want to have is a ease out transition. In this case, if we really look into the transition curves, we can see that we can actually edit the transition and change how much it changes. So this is just a curve that represents at which time, which state of the transition is reached and the state zero, so to speak, is the image completely off the screen. And the state one is the image completely on the screen. And if we change uh, at which point in time it will be where we can make a smooth transition that changes speed as you can see here, or if I just play it, you can see that's even more smooth than anything I used in the video. Uh, that's a very smooth slide in. Add some keyframes here or something. Change their property also to curves. And if I do something like this, you can see that's really crazy. We can see that it moves back and forth because back here it's almost at its final position, but uh, further to the right in time. And uh, we can see that it's earlier in the transition, like 0.44% 
of the transition, so to speak. So you can do all of that. And I just selected ease here and um, ease, ease out and then adjusted this parameter however I wanted it. So we can do that again, ease out, which resets everything. Um, click on that and just drag it over just a tiny bit. And that's probably even too much. So you can see, you can just adjust that however you like and make it perfect for you. And then on the out transition, we have the exact same thing, except that the thing you're going to select here is the ease in. Again, we can go into the keyframe editor and change how much it, it eases in. And I'm probably going to increase that. So you can see it speeds up. Actually, this is the wrong direction as you uh, may recognize if you've watched the video. So we don't use the preset push left, but the preset push right. And so then it's going to push out right. So if you watch the entire thing, you're first going to see a smooth um, push in from the left and then a push out back to the left, which pushes to the right, whatever. I don't know how that naming came to be, but anyways, that's the naming we have. For some of the effects, I used similar curves but I use transform nodes in Fusion and that's another complicated story. And I don't think anyone is interested in that. So I won't talk about that, but that's basically what I did for 90% of the animated objects. And I actually created some presets for myself here that I just then dragged onto everything. So push left for the introduction of the image for the in transition and push right for the out transition. So that's basically all I have to say about this and about this entire topic. Until next time, goodbye.